What's up, guys? It's the Black Biscuit, bringing you stories and news from around the world of hockey. Now, I've played hockey for 24 years, since I was eight years old, and from youth to junior to college, and I truly think it's the greatest game on earth. Growing up as a black kid from Southern California, I had the unique perspective of being somewhat of an outsider when it came to the game of hockey, uh, but I truly have met the most amazing people, two out of the five guys that were part of my my groomsmen party at our wedding a few years ago. I met through hockey, my greatest friends along the way, and I've had some awesome experiences and some not so great experiences all come to me through the sport, but I think hockey's really shaped who I am as a person. So, you know, throughout the course of the year in the NHL, there's been a couple of stories that have popped up, most notably the Akeem Alou, Bill Peters situation. And it kind of brings up something that isn't really talked about much, because quite frankly, there aren't many guys of color to join the conversation. But uh, let's talk about racing hockey, specifically the NHL. So in hockey, we already know that there aren't many players of color. In fact, I think the last stat I saw was there were 30 players of color or so in the league. So roughly that boils down to what, a little bit less than one per team. And as an American myself, uh, you know, even fewer than those are African-American players. I think there's literally less than uh, five African-American players in the league right now. So less players of color means that there's less fans of color. You know, a young black or brown kid growing up, um, you take a look at a basketball court versus a look at an ice rink and, you know, you see there's, a, there's no one who looks like me over here, but everyone who looks like me is having fun over here. So I guess I'll, I'll go that way. And, you know, I used to work at a local rink when I was in high school as a skate attendant and, you know, kind of a skate guard out there during public sessions. Pretty fun job. But um, I remember a black kid who was there on a field trip to the rink one time. I was kind of asking him why he doesn't get into hockey or what he thinks about hockey. Uh, and he says in a farmer's accent, no less, only thing black in hockey is the puck. So, I mean, that's kind of the idea we have about hockey, right, when it comes to it. So do I think that the race issue in hockey needs to be talked about? I think, yeah, because it's only gonna help hockey in the future. And, you know, there was a couple situations this year, as I mentioned, that kind of helped get that conversation started. Uh, Vander Kane was pretty loud during the off season about some of his thoughts and how um, people were perceived. I think in, in particular, he showed a, a picture of, I can't remember who, but uh, someone in the NBA flashing a stack of money before he walked onto a, a private jet. And he kind of drew the comparison of, well, you know, why did I get so much flack for when I did this from the hockey culture and this guy doesn't get any from the basketball culture. And he had a caption of, you know, same race, different sport or something like that. And he kind of started stirring the pot there. And then during the preseason, there were some insensitive comments during a, a game. I think it was Blackhawks versus someone else, but it was about Austin Ortega. A uh, shout out to another SoCal kid there. But uh, I know he was he held the puck in the zone or something, and the announcer mentions Austin Ortega. It sounds like he should be a shortstop. And, you know, I'm sure it's a, a comment that in the commentator's mind is innocent enough, but at the same time, those kind of things, you know, keep minorities away from the game because no one wants to subject themselves to a stereotype like that. And when it comes to entering hockey or approaching the game as an outsider, it's not like I was walking into a KKK rally every day when I went to the locker room. And I'll be the first person to say, um, of course, that some of my closest friends are from the game of hockey. But I mean, you can imagine the feeling of always kind of being on edge, knowing that the next joke could always be about you or be about your family or people that look like you. And in reality, there's going to be no one to back you up or certainly no one that's feeling the same way you are. And that's a tough feeling to have. And what Bill Peters did uh, that Akeem Alou brought to light a little bit earlier this year was was really make that a reality for, for Akeem. And, um, you know, that's that kind of stuff's got to go from the game. And funny story about Bill Peters speaking of, you know, he was my coach actually in the past. I played in a, a tournament when I was a kid, probably about 13 or 14. And it was up in Pin 
Penticton, uh, British Columbia, and he was assigned as the coach for my my team during this two week tournament. At the time, I think he was an up and coming kind of. I think he was coaching at a at the junior A level or maybe at a prep school somewhere. And then, as we know, he went on to coach the Spokane Chiefs to a Memorial Cup championship and get the job with the Hurricanes and the NHL and eventually take a job with the Flames. And uh, for a while when he was with the Flames there, he was, in my mind, you know, that's the closest I had uh, ever worked with someone who has a solid job in the NHL when it comes to hockey. You know, no one that I played against growing up has really stuck in the league growing up in Southern California, you know. And, and, but um, I, I didn't see many guys who, who made a career there. So it's funny that the one person I do know that did have a career in NHL uh, lost it all because uh, apparently he doesn't like people that look like me. So why is hockey so divided? Well, first and foremost, obviously hockey is an expensive sport to get into. And in the hood, at least in the US, kids can start shooting a basketball or kicking a soccer ball a lot easier than they can come across a pair of ice skates. And to play hockey in the United States, you need to not only have someone paying for your ice time, but you've got to have a way to get to and from the rink. This isn't just, you know, walking down the street to your local basketball court or soccer field. And maybe you're in a single parent household where your mom or dad has to be at work and you don't have an option to drive the 30 miles, at least it was for me, to get to the rink when I was younger. Uh, the next point is now in my experience, is it hard being a black man in the hockey culture? Well, yes. I mean, as with anything, if you're different from everyone around you, that just makes it that much tougher. If you walk into a room and you're the only white person, for example, in a room for a black, full of black people, you would know. And everyone else in that room would know too, eventually. That's tough. That's a tough feeling to consistently have. But I mean, my personal thoughts are, again, this coming from a black man who's played hockey his whole life, that feeling I described earlier is a tough one to have. But hockey is honestly the greatest sport in the world and the best and worst experiences in my life have come from playing this sport. And if I could go back, I wouldn't change anything. It means so much to the person that I am today and I still try to skate three or four times if I can a week. But um, it's because of all of this that I, I truly think it's a shame that hockey isn't more diverse and there aren't more kids aware of this amazing life that may be ahead of them if they strap on the skates. The sport of hockey has allowed me to travel to so many different places I would have never gone. And I've met so many people that I otherwise would have never met. But through it all, I think what I've really learned, the important lesson here is that no matter where we're from or how different our upbringings may be, we're all after the same goal in life. And that's happiness for ourselves, for our friends, and for our family. And aside from that, nothing else really matters. I mean, in the future, if we had someone with a genetic makeup and athletic ability of, say, LeBron choose to foster his skills on the ice instead of the basketball court. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome for hockey fans everywhere to watch? So I hope you guys liked my video and drop your opinion below. Let's have a discussion about it. Peace.